The Steadfast Tin Soldier Illustrated by John Patience Once upon a time, there were 25 tin soldiers who had all been cast from the same old tin spoon. They all carried rifles on their shoulders, and they all had the same smart red and blue uniforms. They were all exactly alike, except for the 25th, and he was different simply because he was the last to be made. There hadn't been quite enough tin to finish him off, and he had been left with only one leg. But he stood as firm and steadfast on his one leg as the others did on their two. And he is the hero of our story. Of all the other toys in the nursery, the most remarkable was a cupboard castle. Through its tiny windows, you could see its splendid interiors. In front of it was a little lake made out of a piece of mirror. Tiny wax swans swam upon it, and it was surrounded by miniature trees. It was all very lovely, but the most charming thing of all was the little paper ballerina who stood before the open door. She had a skirt of white muslin, and a blue ribbon was draped over her shoulder and fastened by a sequin as large as her face. The little lady held her arms up in the air and one of her legs was raised so high that from his point of view the tin soldier could not see it, so he thought that she too had only one leg. That's the wife for me, he thought, but she is very grand. She lives in a castle while I have only a box which I share with my 24 comrades. There is no place for her. So the tin soldier gave up his hopes of marriage but he could not stop looking at the beautiful ballerina. At night, when the little boy who played in the nursery had gone to bed, it was time for all the toys to have fun, visit each other, and dance about. The nutcrackers turned somersaults, the chalks drew on the board, and the 24 soldiers rattled in their backs, trying in vain to get the lid off. The only ones who didn't move were the ballerina and the one-legged soldier. Suddenly, the clock struck twelve. The jack-in-the-box's lid burst open and out he sprang. He was a wizard. He saw the tin soldier staring at the ballerina and was jealous. Keep your eyes to yourself, or something nasty will happen to you, he said. But the tin soldier took no notice and did not even turn his head to reply. The following morning, the tin soldier was standing on the nursery window sill. Now, whether the wizard was responsible or whether it was only a gust of wind, no one knows. But suddenly, the window flew open and the tin soldier fell head first down into the street below. The little boy and his maid went out to look for the tin soldier. But though they nearly trod on him, they did not find him. Soon it began to rain very heavily and they were forced to give up the search. When the rain had stopped, two boys came by. Look, there's a tin soldier, said one of them. Let's give him a sail. So they made a boat out of newspaper, put the tin soldier in it, and let him float down the gutter. Heaven preserve me, thought the tin soldier. What waves there are, and such a strong current too. But though he was afraid, he remained standing to attention. All at once, the boat was swept into a long drain. It was pitch dark, and the tin soldier could see nothing. Where am I going? he wondered. This is all the fault of the wizard. Um, if only the little ballerina was with me, then I would be ten times braver. Then there came an enormous water rat who lived in the drain. Show me your pass, he ordered. But the tin soldier kept silent. 
tightened his grip on his rifle and the boat rushed on. Stop him! Stop him! shouted the water rat. He has no pass! The current ran swifter and the tin soldier could see light ahead. He was coming out of the tunnel, but now he heard a terrifying noise. Where the tunnel ended, the water poured down into a big canal. To the tin soldier, it was like a mighty waterfall. Still, he kept his rigid posture and did not even blink. Over he went. The boat spun round and round, filled with water up to the soldier's neck and began to sink. As the water closed over his head, the tin soldier thought of his beloved ballerina, who he would never see again, and he heard a voice saying, Farewell, soldier, true and brave, nothing now thy life can save. Then the paper boat fell to pieces, and the tin soldier sank into the deep, cold water. He was immediately snapped up by a large fish. It was, if possible, even darker inside the fish than it had been in the drain, but the tin soldier's courage did not fail him. He remained as stiff and steadfast as ever. The fish twisted and turned in the wildest manner. Then suddenly it was still, and it seemed as if a flash of lightning passed through it. Daylight appeared, and a voice cried, The tin soldier! The fish had been caught, taken to the market, sold and brought to the kitchen, where the cook had just cut it open. Miraculously, the tin soldier was in the very same house in which he had started his adventure. The cook took the tin soldier upstairs, so that everyone could admire the brave traveler. But the tin soldier only had eyes for the ballerina, and how pleased he was to see her again. She stood as dainty and graceful as ever in front of the cupboard castle. His eyes rested on her for only a moment, and then for no reason whatsoever, unless it was another trick of the wizards, the little boy picked him up and threw him into the fire. The tin soldier felt an unbearable heat, but whether it was caused by his love or by the flames, he could not say. He looked at the ballerina, and she looked at him, and he felt himself beginning to melt. All at once, the door blew open, the wind caught up the ballerina, and she flew into the fire to join the tin soldier. The flames rose up and they were gone. When the maid swept out the ashes the next morning, she found the block and sequin from the ballerina's dress and a little lump of tin in the shape of a heart, which was all that remained of the tin soldier. Hi! If you like this video, please give this a like and hit the subscribe button and click the bell icon to get notified whenever I release a new video.